Hey guys, what's up? So I got a question from uh, Zick Pranks. He says, Chris, um, can you do a video showcasing some of the projects or give examples of typical programming projects? He said, I'm struggling to grasp the scope in which someone can be considered a programmer. Maybe a short list of some of the most challenging projects you have been confronted with and give clarification. He says, do programmers typically write software? And I said, um, I don't actually write software applications in the sense that I'm not building GUI applications in something like C++ or C Sharp where you know, you download and install software like uh, a Photoshop type application. If you were going to build something like Photoshop, I mean, it's an incredible amount of work. Um, this is obviously the, the result of probably thousands of programmers over uh, really decades at this point, you know, it, it's solidifying this product. So there, there's tons of code there. At one point, I think um, uh, Microsoft's uh, operating system of like Windows 7, I believe, numbered in the millions of lines of code and stuff like that. So if, if you're a software developer working at Microsoft and working on those pieces, you're going to be given small uh, small pieces of work um, that take a tremendous amount of effort because all the testing and everything that you have to do to be able to contribute to it. So if you have an established company, so whether or not you're doing GUI development or web development, you're typically working on smaller pieces. Um, you know, there's things that, that you're going to bounce, that they're going to be bounced around like a, a REST service or a SOAP service or something like that. In many cases, uh, when, when you're given a task where it's like, okay, some other team is developing some sort of REST service that I'm going to communicate with and I need to know how to communicate. So a lot of your time is working with that team to say, okay, I send you this data, you return me this. And, and, and you spend a lot of time doing that. Uh, where another team might be like, you know what, we're going to take this data that is re returned from this service that we're building and we're going to then do something with it. And maybe they're focusing on the UI side. And when I say UI, I'm talking about like HTML, CSS, JavaScript stuff. Um, so, yeah, dude, the, pro the projects can be really, really humongous. Um, but in large IT organizations, um, there's typically, they're, they're basically drilled down into, you know, different teams that are working on different smaller pieces of the functionality. Now, where things get complicated, in my opinion, and some of the most complicated stuff I've developed personally, have been the ones that, the projects that I've done on my own time, um, where I have to be responsible for every piece of, of the architecture and, and setting up everything. And for instance, Here's a simple website that I created, and this is just a simple Node.js application. So it's using Node, and I believe it's Express, and then it's also using React. So it's using isomorphic JavaScript, but it's essentially a single page. There's not much here. It's just for a, it was a, um, it was to help out a buddy and do a just simple page for him. So I basically used a uh, Bootstrap theme, used uh, React on the uh, Express JS side with Node.js as the 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 server side and uh, and it renders this so it looks relatively um, you know relatively professional but I didn't do most of the hard work there so um, the project this project is relatively simple but this is a simple Node.js application here's one that I made a couple of months ago and this was something that I actually spent about two or three months trying to perfect and I was trying to build a product that was gonna have tutorials basically to be something along the lines of of what so many other tutorial based websites are trying to do um, although I'm not a huge fan of the co the, the, the name, uh, I chose Hipster because of the, the changing trends in tech and all this stuff. And then as far as code, um, try finding a domain name with code in it, and it's very difficult. I didn't want to have multiple, I didn't want to have more than two words in my name, so I ended up choosing Hipster Code. But, um, you know, the, these are just basically tutorials that I created on YouTube, and I wanted to be able to profile them. But there was quite a bit more that was going on here. There's... Uh, an entire profile system. There is the uh, the login as far as you know being able to log in um, with with your you know your name or being able to use one of these social platforms to be able to log in. So I had to implement all of that stuff, or you could register for a new account. So I wanted to be able to register through the social media sites or just be able to do it through the site. So obviously that took some stuff. Um, in addition, some of the more uh, complex functionality with this w particular website was actually building the quiz system. So if you choose one of these quizzes, this quiz is being rendered um, using React. And then with React, it's also using the Flux architectural pattern. And, um, and the data itself for the, the actual questions is coming from the Python Django server. And it's taking all the questions and it's randomizing the order of the questions so you don't get the same questions in the same order every time. And, uh, and then it's also doing a whole grading system. So um, 
you know, that was, you know, a piece of complexity on its own. I was trying to learn, but, uh, you know, this, this quiz application is, you know, there was, there's quite a bit more than meets the eye there. I probably made it more difficult by using React instead of just going with what Django was doing, but I was also trying to teach myself and get back into the React swing of things. Um, also, this certificate, like how do I dynamically print a certificate uh, with people's names and the course that they completed as well as the date? Well, um, that's all using Python. So I used, uh, that was another piece of functionality that I had, to, I had to create where I was basically creating the certificate in Photoshop and then cutting out pieces and then pasting uh, pieces in using um, a library out there that, that people typically use. I don't remember the name of it for Python and PDF development. So you know, that entire process. And then as far as like, if you wanted to get your certificate and pay for it and things like that, uh, then you have to, you have to, uh, you know, I was making it so you have to pay. So if I was going to print, I could print the certificate and you can see if I opened it up. Um, so even the whole downloading, displaying, writing the certificate, all that stuff that takes uh, programming uh, experience. Basically, if I take the, the quiz again, uh, if I took a new quiz, I, I could show you guys the example of, of how you purchase it or whatever. But um, the point is, is that this entire project probably took three months. Why did it take three months? It was because I was working on it here and there, and I wasn't working on it every night. Um, and it was quite a bit of different things that I wasn't quite familiar with, uh, including enabling HTTPS, which I, I usually uh, don't do. So I ended up going out and buying uh, an HTTPS certificate through Komodo and all this stuff. And like, um, and I, I understand that there's now free resources to do that. A lot of people pointed that out after I'd already done this. So. Uh, would have been helpful for me to know that before. Here's another website. This is just sim this is a Flask website actually. So this is using Flask and not Django. By the way, this is Django, uh, Python Django. This is Python Flask. Why do I use Python? Probably because it's much cheaper to host it on my Linode virtual private server than it is for me to use something like Amazon AWS or Microsoft Azure. Uh, but this was mainly just to try to raise awareness for the heroin and opioid problem in the United States and. I was trying to build an interactive live ticker for deaths and things like that. Uh, roughly based on statistics um, of the past couple of years, it was like four deaths an hour or something like that. So this thing goes up, um, you know, daily. But really, it's, it, there's a timer built in there. It's not refreshing automatically, but it'll refresh on uh, page reviews or whatever. Uh, but like I said, roughly a death every 15 minutes in the United States or somewhere around there. Um, so there's so really all of these projects where they have in, in common they're all web-based projects but i've also done gaming um but just bas basically scratching the service doing games in unity uh, i built a lot of scraper spider projects like here's a um, this was funny because i was going down memory lane um, this was an applebee spider that i was trying to build i don't even remember what the hell i was trying to do but uh, this was years and years ago so i was um uh, still relatively new to programming and it's funny because like um, this is all written in Python, and um, you can see like I created a list here that's called shit. I don't know why I would have created a list called shit, but apparently I was, you know, deleting things out of them and pushing stuff into my uh, my shit uh, list. So I don't know. I I, once, I don't even remember. This is one of those things where commenting of even trying to comment what this program was being used for would be a good idea because I don't remember anymore. Um, another uh, thing that I've just recently been messing around with uh, is here is an, an app that I created using the Tornado web framework. And it's not even really a framework, but it's a, a synchronous framework in, um, in Python where it's non-blocking so it can take as many requests that you throw at it. So it's very similar to the way Node.js is non-blocking, but this is Python's non-blocking. Uh, but there's not a whole lot of documentation on this, but essentially I did get the index HTML working. Uh, there's a bundle.js file, so it's using uh, Webpack to actually handle uh, module loading. It's also using React, and then uh, in addition to that, it's using um, Redux and stuff like that. So you can see I have reducers and stuff, and uh, that's all this uh, Redux architectural stuff, which I'm not a huge fan of, by the way, not at the moment. Um, so... Yeah, to answer, so the long, long story uh, boiled down here is that there, there's all kinds of different topics. If you're going to build a project from scratch yourself, then you're going to end up doing a lot more stuff because even with hipster code here, there's more than meets the eye. There's a database, so I'm using Postgres, okay? Um, there's also servers. I have two servers that, that are handling this. Um, the first server handles all the images and CSS and JavaScript files, and that's all being delivered 
by Nginx, which is its own separate server. And then I have another server, Apache 2, which is then taking and handling all the Django specific stuff. Um, and there was a learning curve behind all of that. Um, there is obviously the CSS. There's the, the simple theme that I use for the website, which is uh, Bootstrap. Um, what else? And a lot of the stuff will seem daunting. You're like, oh, fuck. But really, all you got to do is you start with a framework. So use Python or Django, uh, use Django or Flask, or use another programming language, not you know Python related. Uh, then get your templates rendering, and then once you get your templates rendering, uh, pick out a theme, a JavaScript theme, uh, or Bootstrap theme, and then just download that to your website. Start plugging and playing stuff that's specific to your site, so that way you don't have to be a UI expert. Uh, from there, you need to be able to communicate with a database. So you need to learn how to set up your database, and there's going to be instructions for each framework you use. And then from there, you're going to need to then get a server or someplace you want to host your content. You could choose a shared server, which would probably be easier to set up. Uh, or if you wanted more flexibility and ability to grow, you're going to use your own server um, or a virtual private server, which is what I went. I went down that road. So you have to then learn how to set up initial stuff. And it, it, this is all going to take you several days, maybe weeks, months. Uh, but eventually, you know, these larger things come together and you realize, wow, I built a pretty large project, um, you know, and just, um, you know, just doing things piece by piece. And it's the same thing with the software community uh, for a large corporation. You end up building humongous things by taking things piece by piece. So it's always a piecemeal approach in programming. Nobody just starts writing out shit and then all of a sudden have some masterpiece because anybody that starts coding without proper planning, um, you know, that's that's how we get into the whole death march situation that I've talked about before um, because you're just doing and not and reacting to, you know, things as they come up as opposed to, to planning them out properly. So if you have a project idea, the idea, number one, you need to figure out what it is, what am I trying to create? And then when you try to you do that, you need to figure out, okay, I want to create this, but now what is going to be the best programming language to create that in? Because we've talked about this before, but programming languages are like tools. There's better tools for individual jobs. In some cases, Python may not be the fastest language for web development, but I can save a crap ton of money on hosting. So those are some of the analysis things that get brought into Okay, I'm building a project. I need to host this project. Where am I going to host it? And a lot of this stuff is also just trial and error as well. Um, so I'll be perfectly honest. When I'm building an entire uh, site like this from scratch, I don't usually plan out things uh, in great detail. Not like I would if I worked for a corporation and uh, was was helping them. You know, I worked on a Scrum team and things like that. So there's a big difference between your own personal pet projects and actual humongous software applications when you're working in enterprise development. Uh, and really, enterprise development's easier because you don't have to you don't have to handle so much of the different stuff. The only thing is you can get shit canned if uh, if you don't do a good job. Um, but in most cases, it's fine, dude. You you you're, you're go you'll end up going in uh, to companies and realizing that that they're not the greatest programmers that you, that you thought they were, and that um, you know a lot of people are just you know we're learning things as we go, and it, it becomes painfully obvious that some of the programmers. Uh, in, in companies that you interact with or not, like, you know, these geniuses that you might think that they are. Anyway, guys, um, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye. Oh, and by the way, please subscribe and like. I need to start asking for that because uh, the channel is not growing as much as it used to. All right, thanks, guys. Bye. Hey, guys, so a lot of you ask me, how do I get my foot in the door to become a programmer? And I just want to take a moment to mention Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp is a 12-week intensive course that focuses on the technologies of the here and now for web development. Uh, some of the things that they're actually teaching in this 12-week course, it's geared to get you into the, the industry by focusing on things like jQuery, Node.js, React, Angular, how to use GitHub. So a lot of the things that you're going to need to do as a developer, as soon as you start, they're going to be teaching you in this in this coding boot camp. And the entire goal is to be able to get you into the industry within 12 weeks. So if you guys are interested in learning more information about Dev Mountain Coding Boot Camp, just check out the link in the description tab of this video. Thank you for watching and have a good day.